Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to USA Global TV and radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. Our show today is presenting Pet Psychic Amna, and today we're going to be chatting about monarch butterflies. So let me present psychic amina so do i present you Hi. <laughs> we gotta get crowns or something don't you think wouldn't that be fun i yes i would love yeah, that would. and i present you you know and i'll pretend you handed it to me because we've got to figure out no nope, this way this way it's always the opposite way so I how know. have you been uh good good just have oh spent a uh week with a friend who is very ill and um so uh she has nothing contagious um, but, um, it was, it was the right thing to do. Boy, it was hard. No internet for a while. It went up, but then she's in it, hitting her nineties soon. So oh, it's wow. You're a good person. Person. And, her, and her house is that old too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when my caregiver came, she, I said, please fix the internet. I can't answer any email. And so I apologized to like everybody and said, I'm sorry. I know I was supposed to call you. I was supposed to meet with you. Uh, <laughs> But sometimes the greater good is met by being present where I was. And it was important that I stayed. So that was something that, that she asked. So it was it was great. I really, truly enjoyed her. And That's I think people beautiful. are in the boat by not reaching out past their age range. And I don't mean just up. Go down too. Whatever where, where it works with you. So I encourage it. Well, thank you for sharing that. And that was really wonderful. And and if more people did more things like that, imagine the ripple yeah. effect. So a pet psychic amina for people who are joining us, especially for our new friends on our radio channels, in addition to the TV channels and business talk radio, I'd love for mm -hmm. you to introduce yourself and to share with our listeners and our viewers how you actually help people. I try to find you where you are at and think about that it what it means whatever you are i have people that are very leery about talking to a psychic but i am college and trained on the ground i have worked with wildlife many times i have walked a wolf i have walked a bear he was a baby but he was still he was still big enough and I actually had to put my hand in his mouth to save him from eating something off the ground that would have made him very sick. But that's what we do. We have people that are sitting together. For these animals, the wildlife I'm talking about, didn't have a choice to live in the wild or live in captivity. They were either bred in captivity and then given a life in Southern California. If you're not a, uh, let's see, a Hollywood actor, you, you don't make money, you end up in the sanctuary. So we try to make their life as rich as possible. I've also spent a lifetime talking to animals and plants and that type of thing, because to me, they're all real breathing. Do I need to hear a heartbeat? No, no. Um, I'm very fortunate in my gift to also be able to t talk to people and pets that have passed. So death doesn't, doesn't hold any fear for me. I've seen it by everybody's experience because we've all grown a different place. These are God-given gifts and have I studied it? Yes. I am very fortunate to surround myself with other psychics who have also done this since they were children. And Dottie Boone is one of my co-hosts that I have bring on here. And one of my guests, I would be the co-host technically. And she also talks about her life experience and how things sound and go. And she has taught me a lot since I moved back into Northern California. So this is me in a nutshell. I try to be real, I try to be funny, but I wanna educate you. I wanna educate you. We've talked about honeybees and how vitally important they are and how in trouble they are with all the chemicals in the world and not to be afraid of them because there is a way to be around 
everything, even animals, even aggressive animals. And you get up on a dog, probably not a good idea, but that's a whole lesson in itself on how to be safe around your cats and dogs. I took my littlest cat that we just adopted six months ago, and I took her to my girlfriend's house who has senior cats. They weren't thrilled. <laughs> but it was a great growing moment for Emma because she's young and she can be malleable. Now, did I keep her safe? Yes, I kept her in my room 99% of the time because her cats needed time to decide, well, is this a territorial issue? These are the things I talk about. These are the things I keep. Today, I want to talk about, I guess, plants more, but monarch butterflies. They're a very big deal and they're all in trouble. So when we plant just for the honeybees and just for the plant, for the butterflies, we contribute to a healthier, healthier animal and healthier world. Thank you, Amin. I, I wanted to ask you a question before we move on. You mentioned about if they're not celebrities. So you mean the animals, if the animals are not trained to be celebrities and be in movies and TV shows and other types of events, correct? Yeah, because when you're in Southern California, um, Los Angeles, when I grew up, I didn't grow up in the city, but anytime we traveled, which was every summer, everybody said, where do you live? I said, I live in LA. <laughs> it's just easier <laughs> because I grew up in a teeny tiny little town of 20,000 people and nobody knew where it was. It didn't matter. And it was considered a desert. So that's down there too. California is very fortunate to have every topography possible. <laughs> we have the mountains and the snow and we have the rain and the, we don't have any um, like rain forests, but we get enough rain usually for that. We have the ocean, we have the desert, we have it all. And I have seen it all having been very, very blessed with a father that was a teacher. So we traveled in the summer. Most summers we traveled, only some summers did we stay home. So I've seen the entire United States, Canada, Hawaii, and Europe, and, and the Middle East, actually, and that type of stuff. It brings you a really good, a, I think, a really balanced look at humanity and our lives and how do you go through the world being respectful of other people's culture, other people's approach to life. Uh, you and I probably lived in totally different ways and lives and, you know, all of that stuff. I never had three dogs. I never had three dogs. <laughs> I have these little pictures of. Um, I had a, a German Shepherd and my daughter got a Shepherd later, but um, he passed sadly um, pretty horribly because he got a terrible disease because he was overbred. And that was why we got him because the breeder wasn't going to keep him and he didn't feel that he was worth, you know, a life. And we did. So it's about how you bring people up and how you expose yourself to other things. And that's what we're talking about in the world today is just saying just because you don't know what that culture beans does or whatever doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't it, it doesn't. So I, I'm very fortunate to have traveled because I think that makes us more open-minded. At least I like to think so. Yes, I would agree with you. And I I just was wondering about the animals in, in celebrity status and the type of work <laughs> that animals do. So can, uh, can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go gently because I, I love movies with animals. I grew up on, um, what, Flipper. That's his name, Flipper. <laughs> Remember that? Uh, yes. Do you remember that, Dr. Jacqueline? I sure do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we were raised on these animals in movies, and I, of course, was glued to all of that. And National Geographic really, uh, to my knowledge, didn't have a lot of shows in those days, but they do now. They do a lot. Um, we have uh, now pigs that are the star of the show and donkeys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do you remember the talking donkey and some famous guy did his voice? <laughs> Mr. Hilarious. Ed. No. Yes, there you go, <laughs> Mr. Ed. Um, and you just, you, you think of that it's silly and all that, but you know what, depending on the animal and what its life experiences are, uh, let me give you an example. We now have three cats, never thought we would, but we adopted somebody's kitty that wasn't working out for that family. And so we were, you know, basically rescuing her, wasn't sure if we were going to keep her, but she sucked us right in. Now, these three cats are night and day in personality. We have a, a female 
and she is uh, Rin, R-I-N, and she has very long fur, and she's very small, but she's huge in fur, and she doesn't want anything to do with anybody. She's a lady. She's just very prim and proper, <laughs> and she will uh, agree to be pet at some point, but does she strike out with her nails or bite? No, because that's not, not allowed in our family, and my oldest my youngest daughter actually raised her, and uh, she's not in the country anymore. She's a, uh, and so we have been keeping her for the last two years, and and now she's mine. So then you have Jackson, who is all black. He's a very big guy, and he's very tall, not heavy, but big. And he came as a very very sick stray rescue. So when my daughter adopted him, she did a lot of vet visits. Uh, Rin went through the same thing because she was also a stray when she was adopted and lots of medical and they decided to go through with it and he is big and tall and jet black so we miss him a lot <laughs> if we don't look where the lights on and because they're very quiet and then I told you about Emma Emma is very playful but she got these two cats from the second they wanted to play so much and with her gone a week with me uh, Jackson was just beside himself with nobody to play with these these are God-given gifts because we didn't we didn't go out to find this threesome that would fit together, but we foster it, meaning we encourage that with our behavior, with my daughter and I, how we speak to each other. And there's not a lot of conflict. There's not a lot, you know, every day is different, but you show your animals what you want in your pack. Now, cats are not pack animals, so I use that word very loosely. And they will come off of us we have very strict rules about the kitchen the kitchen here is part of the dining room so it's a little harder to keep them out and we decided well you know actually we're going to let them in the kitchen because their food would be more proper in the kitchen on a tile floor than what sitting on the carpet in the middle of the living room so and it's a living room dining room type thing so there's rules you cannot jump up on anything <laughs> like counters because can you imagine where your cat's feet have been in that litter box i don't care how much they clean it it is not healthy for humans to be in contact with it but is, is it yelling screaming event uh only if they're starting to get on the counter to chew food or you've left something out and some or they're in dire straits of being injured but otherwise it's firmness and kindness because i truly have practiced this it's not what i believe anymore because it's the way I, I operate. And I know because we have adopted many animals that were scared or abused or malnourished. This is just the three we have right now, not all the hundreds we've had before, or the strays that we've taken in and then rehoused at other people's homes as that patience. Can you imagine, Dr. Jacqueline, if I came on your show and I yelled at you and I said, that is just the worst, whatever, hairdo, dress, outfit, earbuds. I don't know. Pick, people pick the strangest things to be bent out of shape. And I, I would say you should come back with, why does it matter to you what I do or say or dress? Because it's your body. It's your choice. It's your dressing. And I, I applaud that. But again, why would it be any of my business? So the cats and the dogs, they, dogs are pack animals. And I stress origin all the time in my readings, because if you're talking to a cat owner, that's a different conversation. Those cats are independent. They could just walk out. We actually had one years and years ago, just walk out. And he said, bye, I'm not coming back and found out he moved five blocks away to a neighbor's house. I was like, okay. And I asked the neighbor, do you want to keep him? We have his food. And she said, yeah, we just love having him. He hated living with us. He hated it. So he had the mentality and the ability to walk away. But luckily, that's the only time that's ever happened. But it gives me a chance to talk about it and say, yes, these terrible things have happened to me too. I'm not, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. And, and you learn from them, I hope. And, and you don't do it twice. I haven't had any other cats walk away. We keep our cats inside full time for a lot of reasons. Monarch butterflies are one. Birds are another, squirrels are another. Um, I have a great video, and I mean great in the, I like it, <laughs> nobody else will. Now I didn't take any pictures of the carcass, 
But um, about two months ago, I rescued a run over squirrel. He was dead. <laughs> um, because the vultures in my area were coming down to feed on it, which is what they do. They feed on carrion. They feed on the dead. And that's all. They don't kill anything. I love them. I absolutely love these big giant birds. Well, they were very disappointed when I got into the road because I parked my car up the hill and I walked back and I I brought napkins out of the car. You know, all those five million napkins you get for the fast food. There's where I did with them. And I picked up the squirrel. And of course, the female was eating at the time. And she's like, oh, there you go. You took my food. And I put it up on the hill away from the traffic where they can eat it. Well, thank you for sharing all of that. That's really interesting. And it's nice that we can get to understand your uh, your love of animals and your passion and, and how this has been something that's been with you throughout your whole life. And I know we are going to be talking about monarch butterflies and also about plants. So let's move to that topic. And sure. what do we need to know? I know that I know other people who have monarch butterflies and they, they've talked about how they are... Uh, can't see because of the green there screen. we go there we go <laughs> there we go right there this is milkweed and milkweed comes in a little bit different place uh looks leaves and all that this one is only a few weeks old in my house i bought it from a gr uh, greenhouse and they shipped it to me, so I needed them to rest in my house for a little while. And now they've been in a pot for two or three weeks. So this is one of four. And I just bought a, a simple pot at, you know, one of the thrift stores. And put some rocks on the bottom for drainage because there's not big holes in the pot. But they have to have holes. Um, every pot plant is different. But if, if the pot has no holes in the bottom, it could root, uh, rot the roots. So milkweed is essential. We used to have so many monarch butterflies. They're the bright, bright orange ones. And uh, go to my Facebook page on um, Bridging Worlds, and you will see an entire series I'm just finishing. But of course, it'll be in the history and pages you can see back. And what I do is I take everybody through about 10 or 15 days of talking about how do you know a male from a female it's easier than you think <laughs> it's very subtle it's very subtle of course but it's in their wings not in any other body part that you'll see there's a difference and one of my favorite things to do when i give a tour when i put in a mark field in the in a wildlife sanctuary we gave tours and i always asked if there was a butterfly around i said who knows what it is girl or boy and 90% of us don't know. And I didn't before I did the research. Monarch butterflies in California come all the way from Mexico. And they go all the way through Seattle. And it's about four generations. So it's not the same monarch. They don't live that long. But it takes them. And that's the path they've been taking for hundreds of years. Now, right now, we are really losing that because no one is the pollution is a huge problem land is a huge problem there's not open fields hardly anywhere that is not agriculture or a business or a city or an ocean <laughs> and there's there's not there's not enough milkweed out so just like i tell everybody please don't put out um nectar in in a bird feeder Plant flowers, plant flowers so your so your birds have things, your hummingbirds have things. Why would, just think about it, if you gave your children sugar water, for example, Kool-Aid, great stuff, but not every day, all day long, and you can say, well, I'm supplementing whatever, wouldn't you rather have flowers that come up and supplement those birds? And I've seen people actually put out like old pillows that they bring the, the cloth back from like the, the covering of it so the birds all of the birds can pull the fluff out and put it in their nest make sure it's not stringy or anything like that like a cottony type thing that would be really good the foam is possible you just got to make sure that it doesn't land on your yard 
and stay there because it doesn't biodegrade. And so it's not the best choice. Uh, anything cotton would be better, be something that would dry out. But with monarch butterflies, we're really losing that. And what we'll talk about later is the honeybees. And if you like eating food of any kind, I highly suggest you plant some flowers because a honeybee is really, really after that. And if, if you're afraid of them, I understand that. I have been, I've been bitten and I've worked in hives, but being around them and understanding that the girls are working so hard to provide their own hive with food and then we come along and take it. Now, the really great, um, I forget their names, the, the people that are, are beekeepers, there we go. They don't try to take and injure the bees at all because that's, that's defeating the purpose. But they can take the comb and they can take the honey in a reasonable amount at a time and market it. And that's what you should be eating is raw honey. That is really good for colds, especially if you get it locally. I did that for my allergies and I got so much better. Is it a slow process? Yeah, because my body's changing and adapting to understanding the pollen. With the monarchs, we want to see those. Those are our, our native bur uh, butterflies coming through California. But if they have nothing to eat, which we've gotten rid of most of the milkweed, um, it's poisonous to most everybody else. That's why nobody else eats it. And that's why the monarch butterflies are poisonous for everybody else to eat. So not like we're eating them, but there's plenty of birds that will. Their coloring alone says, hey, don't eat me. So they're gonna come and the leaves I showed you, they're gonna come when this is all grown and big, they are going to eat the leaves. And so if you get, if you're like me and one day you go out to water and I said, oh, doggone it, somebody started eating the leaves. And then I looked underneath and found the, the little worm, which is the monarch butterfly in before they go into a butterfly stage. And that was great. I was so excited. I didn't buy any. I didn't go get any. I just let it happen. They know where it is. They can fly by. They can, you know, do what they need to do. Some people do buy butterflies. That's okay too. Whatever works for your life. And what I'm doing is also documenting all of this and putting it on my Facebook page as a whole story. So I'll go through most of this transition. And right now, just talked about how simple it is to, to pot these in. One of the plants came in a lot of trouble. It had a really tough time in the mail. It's the smallest, and it lost lots of leaves. The leaves are where they grab the sunlight. So that's really important where they're able to do what we call something like an osmosis, where they take in that sunlight and use it for energy, use it for growth. So leaves are really, really important. But today... That little one is doing really, really well. And two of these, this being one of them that's sitting next to me, we have squirrels. <laughs> They're trying to figure out if I put any seeds in there or if they can. So sometimes you get other plants in there. But this will get very tall. It will get very beautiful flowers on it. And they're highly poisonous. So please be careful. Don't eat them. Um, that's pretty much, you can touch them. That's not, that's not the problem. It's consu consum consumption uh, if you're going to do that. So where do you get butterflies? That's an internet question because, again, I'm not getting butterflies. I'm waiting for them to come in because I live in an area that they should already be prolific. And um, helping with that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, a question I have for you. I have a friend in Pennsylvania who actually... I don't know what the word is. I don't want to say raises monarch butterflies, but yeah, that's she, a better term. Yeah. Yes. And I know that the, they have to be kept in the dark for a certain amount of time. Do you have any experience with that? Um, uh, just it, in book learning is it keeps them in a dormant stage. It keeps them in a dormant stage so that I, and, and your friend would be far more expert. So I'm going to use my layperson knowledge of this stage and it would it is something that will make them feel like they have 
more time to grow, more time to get strength and all that, where you have our son coming up, down, up, down, up, down, and they will go as the season changes and they mature, then they'll come out of that, that, um, and I'm, I'm totally forgetting the, the little cocoon they're in. And sometimes it will get a, will get a late freeze. I, I don't know if you guys get that late torrential rain, but I know we do too. Um, and you get that late cold snap. And I can't tell you how many plants we've all lost <laughs> because they're covered or they're protected or they're put in a greenhouse for that time. And then you bring them all out and then we get that late freeze, which no weather person on the planet can seem to guess. And I get that. We're, that's not possible. So by keeping them in a safe space that is protected, you, you, you're juggling nature. You know how hard it is to juggle nature? So it's like saying, why did the weatherman get it late, wrong today? Uh, because it's weather. <laughs> right. We can't control it. And they take they get degrees for this. And they go and so, study everything. But you know what? There's, a, there's no handbook for, oops, didn't see that cold front coming from Alaska or whatever. Well, down so, here as well. That's when the iguanas fall out of the trees and... Exactly. Uh, the orange crops are destroyed. So oh we have lots gosh. more to discuss, but we're going to take Broke. a break first. Absolutely. And I want to just tee this clip up. It's really kind of fun. So I don't know for anyone out there who's a Downton Abbey fan, there's a new movie mm -hmm. coming out. It's called A New Era. And it's actually uh, available to go to when you're going to a theater in the UK. I think it starts wow. tomorrow. And in the United States, I saw here in Florida, it's going to be in theaters in the middle of May. So let's take That's a look wonderful. at that and another. Take a moment. 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 So I've had the privilege of photographing some incredible people over the years. And during each shoot, I've asked the subject to close their eyes and take themselves to a peaceful place just for a few seconds. I've found that this really helps to refresh the energy between the camera and the subject. They had an energy that was quite special and quite different from the rest of the shoot. The collection grew and now it feels the right time to use it for something good. I think it'd be amazing if we could help to raise awareness and involve people in the discussion about mental health. So what we're asking to do is for everyone to upload their own self-portraits. All of these portraits will become part of a massive artwork. I'm really excited to see this project go from hundreds of pictures to thousands of pictures. Essentially, uh, an ever-evolving artwork that says we're all in this together. Close your eyes and take a moment.
everyone, and welcome back to USA Global TV and Radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is presenting Pet Psychic Amina. I present her again. Here she is. Hello. Hello. We were talking about uh, monarch butterflies and flowers, planting flowers, and things that we need to do to help keep the uh, the environment, this planet, sustainable. Oh. And one thing I would love for you to share with our audience is when we think about all the chemicals that are out there, when we, we have a garden, of course, weeds are going to come at some point, I would imagine, and we have to find ways to prevent the weeds or get rid of the weeds that are not going to affect all of the creatures and the soil. So what are your thoughts about that? Well, the really most important thing I want everybody to take away from is something simple. I really believe that if we don't make the fix simple, people won't do it at all. They'll feel overwhelmed. I know I do. And so what I would like to really encourage everybody, and then and the nurseries where you can get plants are so cooperative now in everywhere I've looked. And I'm, I'm hoping every state and every place that you live does this. And they're really favoring local native plant and that's what you need to know the milkweed i've got is for california i was able to buy it online and have it shipped to me already growing and not have to go through seeds i have found i am not very good at seeds <laughs> and so I, I would rather buy a plant especially since i really want to contribute to the monarch butterflies trajectory it goes right through our area to get where it needs to go and we have many 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 beautiful eucalyptus trees where they hang out and rest up for the day before they go looking for food so when you're doing something please look for native plants indoor house plants are a lot different you can do like i have a ficus sitting in front of me and i, I bought him for 79 cents <laughs> this tall and yes we call him him his name is Charlie Browntree because he's very pathetic. He's never grown very many leaves on a consistent basis. And he's been our Christmas tree a few years when we were all traveling. But there's so much you can do. And and um, right now on Bridging World's Facebook page, I have gone through a series, I'm just coming to the end of it, of what a butterfly does and what it needs and what they're called. They are called the kings of butterflies. That is part of their name, and that's part of what they have. So I would love, uh, Dr. Jacqueline, you let me know, because I know reading things, it can be uh, a tad boring for the people just listening. But if you're driving, yay, then you won't have to look at anything. But I didn't have slides uh, or, or video for this. But monarch butterflies are considered a keystone species. And what that means and why I brought up this is because keystone means just what it sounds like. It's the key. It is some type of everything goes after it and before it. And so somebody, those that feed on it and those that need it and everything that goes through in the world, there's some place that monarchs become vital. They become a vital keystone species. So... Let's see, if you wanna talk about different things, people don't think about a lot of stuff that are in the oceans. And there are a lot of keystone species. Whales are part of that. And what they eat and how they move through the world and their communication is so vital and that type of stuff. Uh, my senior project for my oceanography, uh, part of my education was on leafy sea dragons. And those are in Australia only. But they're in so much trouble because we're poisoning the water and they're beautiful, elegant animals. And you can only see them in aquariums and not very often because Australia is the only place to find them. Australia literally has to rent you some. And in Monterey, they have done that. They have done that. So I've, I've been able to see them up close and personal. These are the things you can do. These are the things that are really, really important. I really was just trying to think about scenarios where it might be impossible for someone to do everything the right way. Uh, can you come up with any where they, they feel they have to use the spray pesticides to get rid of weeds? Like what about 
between rocks or and there's a lot of so think about it this way try try suffocation first i know that sounds really terrible but um you can't not soil you would put either saran wrap which can be picked up and 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 covered you think about when somebody landscapes if you're aware of this because not everybody's into what i am and i have to remember that so landscaping you can do a number of things they clear the land and then they put like grass or sod on top of it well sod specifically is grown for for your lawn but they come with plastic in them so that plastic's never going anywhere it, it's in there forever so i had the unfortunate <laughs> blessing to have to take out dead sod out of an entire lawn so that we could put something else in there because I can't grow on top of dead grass. <laughs> it had been dead for some time. We had went through a lot of droughts here years ago when we were first getting our homes. Boy, that was a lot of work. That was a lot of work. Can you imagine all the suffocation it's doing for the worms and the beetles and all of the animals that would have lived there? And I have seen in the lower part of uh, California where we have some deserts. I'm not as far as San Diego. I'm not going even close to there. But you get past San Diego, you, you got Mexico, and then you come up and you've got the desert area. And there's some absolutely stunning succulents, not just cactus. I got poked a few times. I'm not really a fan, except the little doll ones. They're so adorable. <laughs> and I have one of those. I have a whole whole little round thing of of and I and I got it from one little leg of cactus. And I put it in some dirt, didn't really water it much. That's not what they need. And it is now, this is seven years later, and it's now this big. And I put it in my change purse because I went to a garden show with my mother. And this was like 10, whatever years ago. And I'm like, this lady said, oh, here, you can grow one. You'll love it. And I'm thinking, I'm not doing that for the whole day and driving back to Southern Northern California. So I literally opened my change purse, put this little, I mean, it was this big, Dr. Jacqueline, it was this big, <laughs> little bitty pokey thing, you know, and it kind of laid flat so I could hold it and not totally get severed. Little bitty thing. And I thought, okay it was free how hard can this be put it in a little dirt didn't water it very often just you know kept it in the sun and uh i i'd run out but you'll have to see it next time <laughs> i didn't even think of it but it's in a pot now this big around and it's got a huge dome and i have actually taken it to do a lecture on um landscaping and plants and how that good with nature and everything so i brought some of my plants and i brought that one specifically so people could go up to it and pull little pieces off and then maybe it would slow down growing because i'm not going to take the chance of having to put on giant leather gloves just to get it out so again i have the same problems as everybody else i have the interest to try to get through it and i've killed tons of plants learning when i was in my teens and 20s it was sad it's so sad um so this will be my second live set of milkweed and the first time in a place where i have no yard i have no yard i'm in a condo and it, they sit on the stairway and i'm worried they're not getting enough sun but i see brand new leaves on them every day so i'm telling you is try it try it and uh as long as you can remember to water and that type of thing and they get a decent amount of sun unless you have all shade then guess what you're going to choose all shade plants they do come that way and the nice thing that a lot of people love succulents and cactus is because they don't need much care <laughs> you put them in a pot and you kind of ignore, ignore them kind of most of the time so you can find beautiful succulents these days everybody's making colors and all that type of stuff so why why is this not only my passion and of course i've been raised doing it and then studying it is because this is where we breed. This is where we have other animals coming into our lives. I'm gonna be tickled pink when I, I finally see a monarch butterfly land on one of my monarch leaves, on one of my milkweeds. And everybody asks me, are you gonna buy a butterfly? Nope, I'm gonna leave it in God's hands because I, I love the gardening, I love the challenge, I love learning something. I am sad when they die prematurely. But I'm not perfect, and that's how I learn. Don't be afraid to learn about that. 
But I wanted to tell you guys about how to tell a monarch butterfly before we get too late from a girl to a boy. And I was hoping I could send this picture to you, Dr. Jackson, because I should have thought of that earlier. Can you I share your screen? That. I can. If you'd like to do that, I can pull this document up and just make it fill my whole screen. And let me hit share first. That would be really, really <laughs> Ah, okay, I'm getting it. Okay, share my screen. Yes, we go. Yes, I like you and I trust you. Got to ask, I got to click all the, yes, share. Do you see it yet? No, I don't. Okay, yeah, it's still saying say it. share. I said share. Yes, I still said share. It's saying no, I'm not sharing. I don't care what you do. <laughs> Well, where do you want to stream? Where do you want to do? Uh, yeah, with Streamyard people, Streamyard. <laughs> well, Technology. while you are, oh, uh, there it is. Yay! Yeah, because it all of a sudden flips. Okay, so can you guys see the the butterfly? No, that's the wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just see me on my website? No, okay, I just saw see. your Streamyard invitation. They, oh, I'm so glad. Now you know I'm legally supposed to be here. Yes, you're definitely I'm, supposed to be here. Well, while you're looking know. for that, I will let our audience know that we have a reunion show coming up on Sunday. And it is six hours of live streaming. Amina will be there. And it is not an interview show. It is all about promoting your work. And we are sold out, I'm happy to announce. So mm. do join us right here, wherever it is you're watching us. We will be on from 11 a.m. Eastern time up until I think it's 5 p.m. Eastern time. So don't call me after that, by the way. I need some. <laughs> <laughs> don't need anything. Don't call me. I no, don't call. <laughs> don't reach out. So I, I still see the same thing up. I think you have to change uh, your screen. We love so. technology, don't we? I know. What, so what does that mean? Change my screen. Yeah, That's it's, I, it's, I don't think it's going to work for right? today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had it up and I still have it up. But anyways, I will, no, it says stop sharing. So I must be sharing. Yeah, you have oh, to well. actually share from Chrome and whatever is showing. I am in Chrome. Okay, I am so, so it'll show you a choice of the things that you can pick, and you have to pick the one that you want to show, and what's showing is join me on StreamYard. Wow, at least we're <laughs> inclusive, right? So yes. anyway, we'll, I'm not going to waste any more time, but it's a great picture. If you get a chance to get close to a monarch, just go really, really quietly and that type of stuff. And what you want to see on the back of the wings, imagine the wings are out this way. <laughs> this way. I can get my hands right. <laughs> okay. So you've got the wings here. And then when you go look down the black stripes, if you see a tiny, tiny, because it's on one of the thin stripes, little bubble, like a little oval on both sides of the wing, what do you think you're looking at? I... I don't know, but I'm actually going to share a 50, my 50 screen. Chance. I'm going to share my screen so there that we go. can see the monarch butterfly and you can tell us. There you go. So you are looking at right now in your picture a girl. A girl. Okay. Tell us again how we can we can determine so on that. the bottom wings, not the ones that go off to the side with the white in them. And on the bottom wings, and they're even better to see from underneath on that milkweed that it's sitting on, because that is a type of milkweed. They do come in a few colors. The leaves are pretty, always pretty skinny like that. They will be a tiny little bubble, like a jelly bean, but not, I mean, a monarch butterfly size. <laughs> and that black dot indicates ma male. Hmm. Interesting. So that's how you tell a male from a female. And there's your trivia for today. And you can go plant, uh, go wide and you could, I drove people crazy when I was doing my first project. Guess what? That's a boy. That's a girl. That's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> and that does it. And if you, as you go through, um, see now ours here in California, they travel from Mexico to Canada 
five to six generations go up in one trip and then they come back down to Mexico for the winter and that's five generations to come back and forth and they are so endangered they are in so inc incredible trouble yeah it looks here climate change no, yeah there's no there's well this one's not mine that's yours so you said something about the page Oh no, I'm saying I'm I'm just reading here on this page the threats yeah. to the butterfly climate change yeah. is, is definitely one. Well, and and all the junk we're we're dumping into the atmosphere with all the smoke pipes still going. I am so surprised. I've traveled extensively in every country, every country, ours, every country is still letting smokestacks of whatever means participate in breathing out there. And if you see smoke, that's not good because eventually it's coming to your town and your house. And um, there's still gas fields where, do you remember when we were younger, they, they had the flame? Mm -hmm. You could yes. see those in certain places. I know you can. And there's there are many big cities where you can see the smoke just polluting the yep. air. Well, and what is smog? It's not fog. It just rhymes. It's not. All right. this moisture in the air, and I, I got to live in uh, really far near Sacramento for a while, and I got to drive every morning in Thule fog. Have you ever driven in Thule fog? It yeah. hugs the ground. So your car where is on the ground. <laughs> I literally, when I was learning to drive that, because my dad taught me a lot of things, Thule fog was not on the list. So I had to open my door lean out stand above the car see where I, yep i'm still on there hope they painted those lines dark enough yellow but i had something to watch and i had to do that six days a week because of where i worked and 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 all that type of stuff and it was a it was a side road i stayed away from the freeways i thought at least there'll be less people out here i'll just hit one of them instead of all six um so Thule fog is really up there, but this is what we're talking about is climate change is a really big deal. If you have a car that is not got good exhaust on it, well, it's a fine, luckily with the, the Department of Motor Vehicles, wherever you are. But if you go to any of the fields where they make logs and wood for whatever reason, and they're in the processing, those things have flames going straight up and smoke going everywhere and then you and that's why having the cars if we can all go to electric and those types of things and and just do it differently because my friend the butterfly and not just this one are in trouble but if and you the really milkweed them, also exactly yes. everything you get them from coming to going because of the the sun isn't out as much and you have too many soils that are all contaminated and you wonder why, you know, hey, don't eat that fruit. <laughs> it might not work. Um, but we as human beings have that responsibility. If you want to keep eating at all, then we need to take care of the whole environment. And that is the exhaust. That's why here in California, I know we have really strict fireplace rules. I've, I've lived with a fireplace on and off my whole life. And I absolutely love them. They're so romantic as far as I could sit in the living room and have all the lights off and just, it's warm. Um, but nowadays you can't necessarily burn real wood. You have to go to gas or they're not even putting them in. They're not as fashionable as they were in the sixties and seventies. And we were using them for heat. Um, there's a lot of ways we can cut back and using one use utensils, cellophane, all of that kind of stuff is a contribution to that. We have containers, um, either glass, Tupperware, whatever, at least you're not throwing the Tupperware away. <laughs> at least I don't for the next, next 50 years, but any of that will help. It's so simple. If you think about it in those terms, don't buy a one use one cup. Bring your own. My my daughter, my youngest one, she has um, she would get juice from like a juice squeezy place and just bring a regular plastic cup that she bought at home at a at a um, a Whole Foods type place. And so it was made of recyclable. And that's what I'm saying, because if you want birds and bees and flowers and trees and monarch butterflies and all of and your pets, 
I mean, Dr. Jacqueline, you, you'll love this as a, as a dog owner. I'm walking just around my, my corner. I have houses all around and we kind of make a big triangle. In that walk alone, which only takes me like five or six minutes just to stroll around, there were nine, and I didn't count all of them, so I'm sure I'm missing them, piles of dog waste. Two of them were on the sidewalk. The rest were in the planner. That where you step to get in your car. Not so, and, and what people don't realize is it's not biodegradable. And it's lazy. Yes, I, I, I think that's the first thing. You just don't bother to get a bag. And I, I have I have cat litter that I have to clean out two or three times a day because I like to not have my cat step on it. I just use the bread bags and the chip bag and whatever bag we just finished eating out of and not my daughter buys bag recyclable bags and you can do that but what you don't know about your dog and your cat is they are not eating chickens like with feathers or anything like natural so therefore their waste is not biodegradable ever so it's going to be there for a millennium and then we all get in our cars right there so somebody getting in the passenger side is really not happy. And and it's just, it's not part of dog ownership, is it? I mean, you had three dogs, you know. I do know, yes. No, I think it's definitely, it's not acceptable. I know where we yeah. live, they have the, the containers, you know, and they actually right. have, yeah, they make we it. They, a, with a bag now. They have them with the bag yes. and the drop place. And we still have that many. It's insane. It's yeah. well, and that's a topic for another day. So <laughs> exactly. That's yes. why we love what we do, because I just want to encourage everybody. This is not a, a guilt fest. It's a knowledge fest. Yes. If Education. You know what, exactly. If you know what you are doing, you can make better choices. I truly believe people will when everybody does it, because we do tend to be a herd mentality. I'm not sure why, but you know we are. We can do the pandemic together or we can fight with each other and that's not necessary. And that's what you're teaching with all these great, great shows that I know I keep sharing and, and I really appreciate what you're putting out there is, is just positive, just really, really positive. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'd love for you to give your contact information, especially for our new listeners. We've got our viewers, we've got our business talk radio listeners, and now we have new listeners on two new radio stations. Yay. Well, my name is Amina. I was born listening, hearing plants and animals all my life. I have backed it up as a vet assistant, certified vet assistant. So I worked in surgery and Medicaid medication so I can talk that much with my own pets. And also I want, I'm a trainer. I'm a trainer of people to do it better with our animals. I am loving learning from you when you guys have new ways to do things and I'm hoping to teach something back to you about coexisting. It is become my, my catch word and, and my passion is that we can do this better with these bugs. If anybody's got an inside story on mosquitoes, I'm still struggling trying to find a good idea why they're around because they always bite me. Um, but please let's all do this together because you know, we'll get all to the finish line it's so much happier with so many more butterflies and birds and bees and everything. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you so much, Amina, for being here and for providing so much education and knowledge that is really relevant to each and every one of us. Absolutely. Flowers are to come. All right, I hope you have a beautiful weekend. I'll see you on Sunday. Okay, there we go. We're gonna party. Yes. <laughs> All right, Take care. bye, thank you. Thank you everyone who's been listening or watching. We are just so happy to have you and our platform continues to grow and grow. We're adding more shows. If you'd like to be a team member, be a co-host, be a talking head, be a panelist or an elevated listener, please go over to our website, usaglobaltv.com and go to the contact us section and let your desire, your dreams be known and we'll see where we can work together. That's all I have for right now. That's our last show for this week. 
I think we had 25 shows this week or so. So please go over to our YouTube channel, which is USA Global TV, and subscribe so that you can be made aware of all of our fabulous shows. You can also listen in on the radio 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And as I mentioned, we have various ways on the radio to listen. I like to go to my tuner radio. That's either my tuner app or my tuner, M-Y-T-U-N-E-R radio. I think it's dot com. It is dot com. So please go over there and you can listen to us when we're not streaming. And it's a great way to get educated with any time that you have available. We're here for you. And that's our goal. It's entertainment, education and inspiration and hope. Thank you. God bless you. Have a beautiful weekend. Join us on Sunday for the reunion show. We'd really love to have you with us. As I mentioned, we're sold out. So you'll get to meet some new people and get to understand what are some of the things that people are doing and how can it bring value to you and your life. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amina. Bye. 